Welcome to Trojan Corner, The Number Devil, a mathematical adventure by Hans Magnus Enzensberger. The Sixth Knight. You probably think I'm the only one, said the number devil the next time he turned up, perched on a folding chair in the middle of a vast potato field. The only what? Robert asked. The only number devil. But I'm not. I'm one of many. Number heaven, where I come from, is teeming with us. I'm not even one of the bosses. The bosses do nothing but sit and think. Now and then one of them will laugh and say something like, R sub n equals h sub n factorial times f of n open bracket a plus theta close bracket. And the others nod and laugh along. There are times when I don't understand a thing. You poor devil, the Robert said. Here I thought you were so sure of yourself. Why do you think they send me out at night? Because the bigwigs have things to do other than visiting apprentices like you. So I'm lucky to have even you. Is that what you're saying? Don't get me wrong, said Robert's friend, because they were pretty much old friends by now. I have nothing against what they cook up, the bosses up there in number heaven. One I particularly like is a fellow named Bonacci, an Italian, who sometimes lets me in on what he's doing. He's been dead for years now, poor Bonacci. But that doesn't matter when you're a number devil. Besides, he's a fine chap and was one of the first to understand what zero means. He didn't discover it, mind you, but he did come up with what we call Bonacci numbers, a capital idea. And like most good ideas, it begins with, what do you think? A one, or rather, two ones. One plus one equals two. You take the last two numbers and add them together and keep going down the line. Till the cows come home? You guessed it. Next, the number devil started running through the Bonacci numbers in a kind of sing-song. The aria from a Bonacci opera, he might say. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, eighty-nine, one hundred and forty-four, two hundred and thirty-three, three hundred and seventy-seven. Robert clapped his hands over his ears. All right, I'll stop, said the number devil. Though I'd better write them out so you can see what they look like. What have you got to write on? What would you like? How about a scroll? unscrewing the tip of his walking stick. He pulled out a thin roll of paper, tossed it on the ground, and gave it a poke. An endless stream of paper rolled out along a furrow. How could all the paper fit into that stick, Robert wondered. Meanwhile, on and on it rolled, until it rolled out of sight with all its Bonacci numbers. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, eighty-nine, one, forty-four, two, thirty-three. After that, the numbers were so far off and tiny that Robert couldn't read them. Now what? If you take the sum of the first five and add one, you get the seventh. If you take the sum of the first six and add one, you get the eighth. And so on and so forth. I see, said Robert, but he didn't sound particularly excited. It also works if you jump over numbers. Keep in mind, though, the first one must always be present. You start like this. One plus one equals two. And now you jump one plus three. And now you jump another plus eight. And now you jump yet another, plus 21. And what do you get when you add them up? 34, said Robert. In other words, the Bonacci number after 21. And if that's too hard for you, you can get there by hopping. For example, you take Bonacci number 4, which is 3. And you hop it 3 squared, which is 9, said Robert. Then you take the next Bonacci number, number 5, which is 5, and make it hop. Five squared equals 25, said Robert without missing a beat. Good. And now add the two together. Nine plus 25 equals 34. Another Bonacci number, he cried. And not only that, the number devil said, rubbing his hands. The ninth. Because four and five make nine. Fine, fine, fine and dandy. But tell me, what are they good for, your Bonacci numbers? You don't think mathematics is for mathematicians only? Nature needs numbers too. Trees add, fish subtract. Come on, said Robert. You don't expect me to believe that. I expect you to believe that every living thing uses numbers, or at least behaves as if it does. And some may well have an understanding of how they work. Well, I don't believe it. Take rabbits, for instance. They're more likely than fish. I bet there are rabbits all over this potato field. I don't see any, said Robert. Look, there's two now. Sure enough, two teensy white rabbits hopped up to Robert, plucked themselves at his feet. Male and female, I think, said the number devil. And a male and a female makes one couple. 
And as you know, one is all we need to start things rolling. And he wants me to believe that you can do arithmetic, Robert said to the rabbits. Well, I'm too smart for that. What do you know about rabbits, Robert? said the two rabbits in one voice. I bet you think we're snow rabbits. Snow rabbits, said Robert, who wanted to show them that he did know something about rabbits. Snow rabbits are white animals, aren't they? Correct, they replied, and they're always white. Well, we're white only when we're young. It takes us a month to grow up, and now our fur turns brown. And then we want to have babies. It takes another month for them to be born. One boy and one girl bunny. Just two? asked Robert. I always thought rabbits had oodles of bunnies. We have, we have, said the rabbits. But not all at once. Two a month is enough. And they grow up and do the same, you see. But I'll have a long since woken up by then. I have to go to school tomorrow morning. No problem, the number devil interrupted. Time runs faster here in the potato field. A month lasts only five minutes. At least when you use the special rabbit clock I just happen to have with me. With these words, he pulled a large pocket watch out of his trouser pocket. It had two large rabbit ears, but only one hand. The hand shows months, not hours, he said. A bell rings every time a month goes past. All I have to do to set it in motion is to press the button at the top. Shall I? Oh, do, the rabbits cried. Good. The number devil pressed the button. The clock started ticking. The hand started moving. When it reached one, the bell rang. A month had passed. The rabbits were much bigger, and their fur had changed color from white to brown. When the hand had reached two, two months had passed. The mother rabbit had brought two teensy-weensy white rabbits into the world. Now there were two couples, one younger, one older. But they did not remain satisfied for long. They wanted more babies. And by the time the hand had reached three and the bell rang again, Mother Rabbit had given birth to the next two rabbits. Robert counted the couples. Now there were three, the original one, brown. The children from the first litter, who had meanwhile grown up and turned brown, and the fur white babies. When the hand reached four, the old mother rabbit gave birth to two more rabbits, and her first daughter, not to be outdone, gave birth to two. That meant that there were now five couples hopping around the potato field, three of which were brown, and two of which were white. I wouldn't try to keep them straight if I were you, said the number devil. You're going to have a hard enough time just counting them. Robert had no trouble when the clock reached five. There were only eight couples, but there were thirteen by the sixth ring of the bell, and Robert thought, this is getting out of hand, but at least he could still count the number of couples when the clock reached seven. There were exactly twenty-one. Any ideas? The number devil asked Robert. Of course, it's obvious, Robert answered, but not two numbers all the way. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. But even as he spoke, new hordes of rabbits were being born and joining their brown and white kin romping over the potato field. Before long, Robert couldn't keep up with them anymore, and the rabbit clock ran on and on. Help! Robert shouted when the hand started in on its second round. Thousands of rabbits and no end in sight. It's awful. Let me show you the rabbit list I've put together. Then you could see the whole picture. It shows everything that goes on between zero and seven. But it's long past seven, Robert said. There must be thousands of them. 4,181 couples which means that in five minutes there will be 6,765. Do you plan to let them go on? Because if you do, the whole earth will soon be covered with rabbits. Sooner than you think, said the number devil without batting an eyelid. All it will take is a few rounds of the clock. Well, stop them, please, Robert begged. This is no joke, it's a nightmare. Look, I've got nothing against rabbits. I like rabbits, but enough is enough. Stop them, please. All right, Robert, but only if you admit that the rabbits are behaving as if they had learned the Bonacci numbers by heart. Fine, great, anything you say, I admit it. Just stop them, or they'll be crawling all over us in no time. The number devil pressed the button at the top of the rabbit clock two times, and the clock started running backward. Each time the bell rang, a large number of rabbits vanished, and after a few turns of the hand, there were only two rabbits left in the potato field. What about these? asked the number devil. Do you want to keep them? I don't think so. They just start all over again. Yes, that's nature, said the number devil, rocking gleefully in his folding chair. And that's how Bonacci numbers are, Robert responded. I don't know if I like the way they are taking off for infinity. Though, as you've seen, they can just as easily go the other way. We're back where we started with, with one. 
And so again they parted in peace, leaving the rabbit couple with their own devices. The number devil went back with his old friend Bonacci and their number crunching cronies in number heaven. Robert slept dreamless through the night. When the alarm rang the next morning, he was relieved to see it again from a perfectly ordinary alarm clock and no rabbit clock. If you still don't believe that nature acts as if it knew how numbers work, turn to the tree on the next page. Maybe you find all of those rabbits a bit confusing. Well, a tree can't go romping through a field, so you won't have any trouble counting its branches. Start from below, at the red line numbered 1. It runs only through the trunk, as does line 2. One line higher, a line 3, the trunk has been joined by a branch. Keep going. How many branches are there by the time you reach the top line 9?